Hey guys, this is Amal from Tech Other Craft. In this video, I want to talk about a rumor that's been going around that the new Samsung Gear S4, so the next model for the Gear Watch, will have Android Wear or Wear OS. I'll kind of refer it to either one in this video, but Android Wear, Wear OS will be on the new Samsung Gear S4 or it will be called the Galaxy S4. That rumor's been going around because basically there was a report that said that there were some Samsung employees that were wearing the Gear S4 or a Samsung watch that looked like it was running Android Wear or Wear OS. So I do have a couple thoughts. I mean, the general consensus has been, or the rumor has been, that the Gear S4, the next version, will have Android Wear. I do want to throw out two other theories, though, and I just want to take a moment to talk about some pros and cons of Tizen versus Android Wear just in this video. But let me just throw out the two theories that uh, I came up with. Uh, because they're making it sound like it's kind of a for sure thing, or at least, you know, that the S4 will have Android Wear. That's kind of the end of the story, as far as most people are reporting. Now, there are probably other theories that people have, but I haven't heard anyone mention this. So I'm just going to suggest two other theories. The first is that there may be a Gear S4 that is running Android Wear. However, there's a chance that Samsung could release the next version of the S4 in Tizen and using Android Wear. So they could have kind of two models of the same watch, an S4 with Tizen and an S4 with Android Wear. Now, that's just one theory I have. The other theory I did have was there's been rumors of the Google Pixel Android Wear watch going around. And my thought was, you know how Google hires or contracts out with manufacturers like LG, um, HTC, that kind of stuff, to make their hardware. And my other thought was, I wonder if, you know, there is a Samsung, you know, some Samsung is testing out for Google, for the Google Pixel, uh, a version of Android Wear running on their hardware. And so, one of the cool things, one of the undeniable things, I think, is that Samsung's hardware is just kind of top-notch. And so, you know, the Android Wear has some nice hardware too, but I think Samsung's implementation of the dial here and a couple of the features I'll talk about later, I think that one possibility was that maybe Google just contracted out with them so it won't come under it won't come out as a Samsung watch the Samsung S4 will still have ties in but basically that the Google Pixel Android Wear watch will be made by Samsung and it will be running Wear OS so there was just two theories that came to mind I don't know I could be completely wrong the next watch could just have one single version of a S4 with Android Wear I do hope they keep Tizen. I hope my second theory is also true that they'll have a Wear version and, and a Tizen version. And uh, let me just get into explaining why. I wanted to kind of do a quick comparison. Uh, these are both updated to the most recent uh, you know OS, whatever you want to call it. I will say that you know this is the first generation Huawei watch. There is a second generation already out. One of the key points I want to point out with Android Wear is that Google with Android Wear, unlike their phones, Google has made it so that the software experience is supposed to be the same across all Android Wear devices. So what that means is, other than like watch faces, there's no other customizations you can actually do to the OS, right? So you can't have widgets like the Tizen system does. Any Android Wear watch you pick up, you should be able to, if you've used Android Wear before, you should easily know how to navigate it. You should know how to get into, you know, settings and all that kind of stuff and change stuff. In theory, Android Wear is supposed to be all the same across devices other than watch faces. And so that is kind of one pro and one con. First of all, the reason they did that was they wanted to make sure they could update Android Wear watches a lot easier, kind of without having the same problems they have with their phones where, you know, different uh, skins running on Samsung or LG versus uh, HTC and all that kind of stuff. So they want to keep that option available. What that means is though, when you pick up any Android Wear watch, there's not going to be anything new to play with. I mean, there'll be watch faces and that kind of stuff, right? And so you, you'll be able to do that. But other than that, the software is supposed to be the same across any Android Wear device. That is in theory, that's of this recording. Maybe Google will change their mind about that and let you know have them have an Android Wear version that has a Samsung skin on it, and so then you can actually implement things like widgets, 
you know, calendar, music player controls that, that are easily accessible through th the widget function on Tizen. One of the cool things though is they're allowing hardware manufacturers to have their own hardware. So what that means is, for example, this is the Huawei Watch 1. <clears throat> when it came out, it had a speaker built in. You probably can't see it, but there's a little slot down there. And people found it and it wasn't activated. And of course, then when Android Wear enabled the speaker function or the ability to take calls on their watch, Huawei was able to then activate the speaker. And so that is promising because there are two cool functions on this watch, on Tizen, that I think could carry over to an Android Wear watch, even with all the software limitations, because they're not placing limitations on hardware. And so the, the two functions I'll mention is um, this dial, right? Everyone kind of agrees that this dial is way easier to navigate when you're getting into your apps and you're going around. It's way easier to, to select apps. And what you'll notice is, of course, that Android Wear has changed their kind of how they navigate. It's kind of a similar, this circular spinny uh, motion. So what that means is hardware-wise, you could have a spinning dial on an Android Wear device. So because it is a hardware implementation, it's not a change to, to software. That's kind of one hope that they'll carry over the spin dial. The other thing is Samsung Pay, which is on Tizen right now. You can't use Samsung Pay on Android Wear, at least not that I've noticed, um, at least on my watch, because it does not have NFC, uh, if I remember right. So this is the older version, maybe the newer versions do will have NFC, but Samsung Pay uses NFC and MST, which is a magnetic stripe technology. You can use Samsung Pay to, to do a magnetic stripe on any card reader. Since it is a hardware implementation, that could also come to Android Wear, and they could release a Samsung Pay app that is compatible with uh, Android Wear and NFC and potentially even have a watch that has the MST technology built in. So those are two promising things. Let me just talk about some pros and cons really quick. One of the nice things about Android Wear, of course, is that it integrates with a lot of the Google services. So you can see I have Google Keep there. Uh, you can have Google Assistant and your, your feed. And um, it just integrates a little bit better if you're used to using Google, and which I am, right, Gmail, inbox, uh, the keep note app, that kind of stuff. So that is a nice function, the to-do list. Having said that, a lot of the stuff that I do on my smartwatch, both of these functions, both of these watches have the ability to answer calls, the, Wa the Huawei watch can do, Android Wear can do, the ability to reply to text messages, to glance at the notifications. Um, the two main things that when I bought my smartwatches was I wanted to be able to take a phone call on my wrist I do leather work, so a lot of times my hands have like leather dye on them or they'll have oil on them. And so I don't want to grab my phone, and since these have screen protectors on them, uh, I can easily you know, swipe to answer or touch the, my, phone, my watch to answer a call and just take it on my wrist and not have to worry about getting uh, leather dyes or leather oil on, on my phone. So I wanted to have the ability, and both of these have that. In theory, the, the next version of the S4 uh, should have that also, so that's not a really a big deal. Same thing with answering calls, uh, same thing with answering messages. So I could see what the message is if I need to respond right away. Both Android Wear and Tizen allow you to do that. So that, those are all pluses. The main thing I will say though is that Tizen's widget function is really nice. So it has all these widgets. You can also add more, but basically calendar, uh, if I was playing music right now, I was playing a YouTube video. It has this controller. Controller now that has it too, but it it does it through a pull-up menu. When I, when you're when you're um, listening to something, it will default to either to the main screen or a pull-up menu. And so and then you know there's other functions too. You can create a reminder, and uh, you can look at your events. There's also other health stuff which I don't have enabled because I'm not really into that. But there's also a quick. Uh, call functions, so you can tap on on that, and so it, I can either call or text my dad just through that widget alone, and so those are all nice functions. Of course, the weather and all that kind of stuff. So I do like that feature, the widget feature that is here, without having to go into the actual app store and you know find what I want to do. So that is a really cool function of uh, Tizen that I will miss if they go to an Android Wear watch. Now. 
the, on the, the negative side for Tizen is that their app selection is very limited. They do have some apps and you know watch faces and all that kind of stuff, but it does not have the same number of apps nor the app developers working on the Tizen OS. A lot of the stuff that you would want to do with a watch is already built in either into the Samsung OS or you can probably find a version of it on Tizen's app store. But of course like Google Keep for example or Google Maps, you're not going to be able to find that, uh, that function here. Now there are some third party uh, kind of uh, developers who are working on that but they don't really get really good ratings on, this, on the app store so I haven't actually downloaded those. But of course on Android Wear, you do have those built-in functions. So for example, if I'm navigating, it shows up on my wrist. Of course, that is kind of annoying when I'm driving and I glance at my watch to see the time and instead there's directions, I have to kind of swipe it away. Uh, but it is nice if you're going for a walk, for example, you could use your watch to navigate. Same thing with Google Keep. If you want to use that to keep notes, you can go into the Keep app and, and take a look. If you're going shopping, you can use a little checklist function, that kind of stuff. I will say, I haven't used it as much as I thought I would. So there's a lot of things that, there's apps that are out there, uh, like games and like YouTube players that are really cool, but I don't actually end up using them on my watch. For me, the main functions are already kind of built into them. Ability to take calls, respond to messages uh, quickly, you know, sending short replies with pre-built messages, uh, music control, for example, that kind of stuff. That's all super nice. They're both built into that into the OS. I will say Android Wear is a little bit more finicky. There are times where I power my watch and my phone just takes forever to connect. I have to go into the Wear OS app and it says, you know, connecting, but it doesn't connect. I have to kind of refresh and toggle the Bluetooth, you know, on and off. And then, and then Android Wear will connect. I don't have the same issue with the Gear app that um, is on my Samsung phone. Now it is a Samsung phone, so maybe that's something to do with it. The other thing is I have noticed that the battery life it really depends, but the battery life on Android Wear, at least this watch, is a little bit worse um, than my gear. This can go for like two days, uh, depending on how you have it set, if you have it on always on display or not. Um, but this can go, you know, uh, yeah, a long time, like two days, maybe two and a half days. Whereas my Android Wear watch, the Huawei watch, can go mm, maybe a day and a half uh, without having to recharge it. So battery life is another thing. I think Samsung pulls it off. Of course, this is a larger watch, so maybe they have a larger battery in there. I, I don't remember the spec right off the top of my head. So anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on Tizen and Wear OS. What I really hope is that Samsung ends up doing either one of the two, that they'll release an S4 with Tizen and an S4 with Android Wear, and you can pick. And what I really hope is that the hardware will all be the same, that it will have the rotating bezel, it will have hopefully Samsung Pay and the MST uh, technology, not just NFC, and that you can choose between Tizen or Android Wear uh, with just you know slight variations in the the operating system, but that the major functionality of the spinning bezel and that kind of stuff will still be retained, or that one of the cool things maybe would be that they end up making uh, a Wear OS device for something like a Google Pixel wear. And so those are my two thoughts. I, I do favor the Tizen OS for some reason. I actually have had the Android Wear watch longer than I've had the Gear S3. Anyway guys, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have used any of the smart watches, what system do you prefer? What are some of the pros and cons of Android Wear versus Tizen? Post a comment below, let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts? Do you think that the next S4 will have Android Wear, will it be Tizen? And be sure to check out my website, techleathercraft.com if you are interested in leather cuffs for watches. I do make them for regular watches, of course. You can go check them out at techleathercraft.com. Follow me on all my social media. All the links will be below. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Till next time, take care, guys.